Well, hello again. It's lovely out here today. It's a bit of ice, as you can see, a bit of frost, but we've also got some sunshine. We've got some lovely winter sun. So even though it's minus two as I'm walking along here, there's a crisp freshness to the air and uh, that's no bad thing. It's good for clearing out your sinuses. Ah, yes, lovely. What it also means, of course, is that the ground has firmed up. We've had weeks of slush and mud and now, uh, for the first time in ages, there's no sound of squelching when I walk. So there you go, welcome to another dog walk. This is of course Widmer Fields, where most of these little walks take place, because it's right next to our house basically, so I come out here daily with the dog, unless I go on somewhere else. It's got a little landmarks that I look for as I'm walking around, and uh, this is one of them. This is bizarrely the only gorse bush, or fuzzy bush as we used to call them when I was growing up in Cornwall, it's the only one on these whole fields and uh, it's very healthy. Look at the winter gorse flowers on there. Beautiful colour, isn't it? Catching the sun. Beautiful, beautiful thing. And I'm surprised it hasn't spread more because it's been here for years and years, but it's just one random gorse bush in the middle of a big open field. It's quite surprising. But yeah, that's one landmark. I'll point out a few more as we go. We're now going up to another landmark. Incidentally, this is where we had all the flooding on the fields in one of my last videos and where you saw the water running down through a channel here and into a soak away but it's all stopped now or it's frozen one of the two but anyway you've got this lovely oak tree just here and uh, just to the right of it in a minute you'll see one of my favorite trees it's really gnarly it's really twisty I'm not entirely sure what sort of tree it once was I suspect it was an oak looking at what's left of the bark Although I see here a great big chunk of bark has actually fallen off in the last day or so. Maybe because the frost has got inside it. This bit here is definitely cherry, but I don't think that's the actual root of the tree. I think the root of the tree is here. You can always tell a cherry because they've got that sort of silvery bark with the horizontal lines on it. What I love about this twisty old tree is it's just how gnarled and twisted it is. Isn't this beautiful? And it's got this open area here which if I go around and film from a slight distance, you can see you've got like an, an eye you can look through. I bet the Celtic ancestors would have seen that as an opportunity to see into other worlds, the same as they did when building hold stones and hag stones and things like that. Uh, yeah, another thing to note is that that there on this cherry is the remains of a chicken of the woods, which I did sample some bits of earlier in the year. Delicious edible fungus. And I found two more chicken of the woods down this little wooded path here. So there you go. That's the second landmark on this little walk. All right, Harris, let's go. Okay, the next landmark, it's, yes, it's a pampas grass, um, which seems a bit bizarre out in the wilds of nowhere, but there is a house just behind here. I won't show any details of it, but um, the guy who used to live here before, not the people who live here now, he planted a little like sensory area here. There's a buddleia there and there's various other plants. There's another buddleia there. Um, the one thing I will be thankful to the couple for is over here. Because over here there are two trees which are sometimes called Himalayan honeysuckles but are also known as pheasant berries. And this is a pheasant berry bush here. There's nothing much to show for it here. But when the berries are out, they're a lovely chocolate dark brown colour. I'll put a photograph up to show you now. If you pick those berries when they are just about going over, like they're too ripe, it's so ripe in fact, if you try and pick them, they almost start squishing in your fingers. They are delicious. Um, they taste rather like burnt caramel. It, it, they've got that sort of bitter sweet taste. They are absolutely beautiful. And you can use them for making things like fig rolls, but without the fig, you know. There was a rumor probably an urban myth during the 70s and 80s, that anyone who planted a pampas grass outside their house indicated that they were swingers. But having met and known the old couple that used to live there, I don't think it was planted there for that reason. I really don't. And besides which, the whole thing's probably nonsense anyway. The way the frost has formed on the grass here is absolutely beautiful, isn't it? All the little grass stems have gone spiky. It's really pretty. This little path we're going down through here now between two fields. Um, 
I quite often see rabbits down here, particularly in late afternoon. And um, last year, in the height of summer, I was walking down to this section here and I happened to catch a flash of movement just over there amongst the bushes. And there was a couple of fox cubs playing. I quickly grabbed my phone out of my pocket, put it on zoom, and I managed to get just a tiny bit of footage of one of the foxes as it disappeared. Always a lovely thing to see. Oh, there's a fox there now. I don't know whether you'll actually get to see him. Can you see him there? Let's see if I can zoom in on him. He's very clear to me, but how clear he'll be to you, I don't know. But he's sitting there in the sun, enjoying himself. Wow, what a treat. Don't bother by me at all. I mean, I am a fair distance off. If I went anywhere near him, he'd run off like a shot. But what a lovely thing to see. Well, what a treat that was. What a bonus. You don't expect to see a fox out in, in the cold, just sitting there, but he was just sitting there sunning himself. Wasn't bothered by me at all. What a glorious thing. Didn't look very old either. So maybe one of the cubs I saw earlier in the year. Glorious. Let's move onwards. We're now approaching the last landmark I will point out on this particular walk. And it is the Lonely Tree, as it's known locally. As you can see, it's right out there in the middle of a large farm field. I don't know what's actually growing in this field at the moment. It was uh, rapeseed last year in the autumn. But yeah, there it is, that one lonely tree in the middle of that big field. There's all these fields all around, all these trees all around, I should say. But no, there is that one tree in the middle of the field. and. The fact that it's on its own means that we know it's an oak. And the reason we know it's an oak is because oak is one of the few trees that's quite happy being on its own. Trees generally are communal things. They are all connected under the ground uh, by the uh, mycelial fungal network by which they use to swap nutrients and water and that sort of thing. And they, they're all in contact with each other. Not in the way that we are, by telephone or anything like that, but they are all kind of connected. And... Um, a plant can recognise its own offspring and send nutrients to it if the offspring is actually low in food or wilting. It's an extraordinary thing. They call it the wood wide web. And we're only really just starting to understand it now. But some trees, if they are disconnected from other trees, will just wither away and die. It's almost like they die of loneliness. But not oaks. For some reason, oaks are able to survive quite happily on their own. And that's why I can be pretty sure that the uh, tree out there, the lonely tree, is an oak. So there we go, another dog walk, another short introduction to some of the more interesting features of Widmer Fields and the place where I walk my dogs. And uh, I hope you enjoyed yourself. I'll see you for the next one. Bye.